Do you know how plants get their scientific names? The science dedicated to naming, describing and classifying plants is called plant taxonomy. Taxonomists can be professional researchers or experienced amateur botanists. The reason we need specialists to name plants and describe new species is that it's not actually straightforward. In nature, plant diversity is generally not divided into very clear groups with nice boundaries. It's more like a continuum. But as humans, we need a way to distinguish different groups and put a name on them so that we can be sure that we're using the correct plant for food or medicine, for example. Naming and classifying organisms is also a way for us to understand the diversity of life out there, because it's very difficult to protect what you don't know. To this day, about 400,000 species of plants have been scientifically described. We think that tens of thousands more are yet to be discovered. So how do we know that we have found a species that is new to science? A large part of that process happens in a herbarium, which is a library of dried plants with associated data. A herbarium generally doesn't just contain one specimen of each species. We try to have several specimens from different places collected at different times. This allows us to look at the variability within species and between species. In order to delimit species, we compare specimens of plants that share morphological characters. We look for patterns and differences in how they look like and where they grow. And we see if we can sort them into groups that can be easily distinguished from each other, based on a set of attributes. For this process, observations gathered in the field, when the plants were collected, are extremely useful. Nowadays, we also use DNA to see how plant groups are related to each other. We can extract DNA from living plants, but also from herbarium specimens up to 200 years old. But we don't stop at DNA, because if we built a system where plants can only be identified by sequencing their DNA, it would be really impractical. When you go to the shop to buy fruits, you can quickly recognize what you have in front of you based on what you see and maybe your sense of smell. You have learned to recognize a pattern, a set of characters, and in your mind, you have attached a name to it. And this is what taxonomists do. We build a classification system that matches what we know of plant evolution and how the different groups are related to each other. But we are careful to place the boundaries of these groups in a way that allows us to distinguish them from each other. Each group, each species, is identified by a set of characters that is unique to it. So after all this research, if we have specimens that form a coherent group, but this group doesn't match any species that has already been published, then they probably represent a species that is new to science. Once we have established that we have a new species, we write a description of it, pointing out the characters that distinguish it from other species. We give it a name, and we pick a specimen that will be the reference for that name. We call this a type specimen. We also take photos or commission a botanical artist to draw an illustration of the plant. Then, we share our results with the rest of the scientific community by publishing the new species in a peer-reviewed journal or in a flora. And eventually, this information also ends up in identification guides that people can use in the field. If you can learn how to identify plants on your own, or with the help of a guide or a flora, you can then use that knowledge over and over again, for free, whenever you need it. The only thing you'll need are your senses, and maybe a hand lens.